the good news for homeowners these days looking to repair or renovate their homes, there are a wide variety of options out there for products and design. The bad news is there's so many choices, it can be hard to make a choice. Today we're talking to some inside guys, guys inside the building trades who can help coach us with some of those decisions so we make the investment wisely. We're here with Adam Saltz, who knows everything there is to know about siding. What kind of factors do people have to consider if they're thinking about putting new siding up on their house? Uh, there's many factors that have to uh, consider, one of them being budget. There's so many options out there now that you really need to know what you can afford. And you have to remember, you get what you pay for a little bit. Let's run through the wide range of siding choices that people have now. The old-fashioned way is wood. It's expensive to maintain, but it's beautiful. From there, you could go to a vinyl, which is what most people think of when they think siding. There's so many choices, and it depends on how long you live in your home. Are you getting it ready to just sell? Well, then maybe you want to go with the inexpensive siding. It's a little thinner. It'll be more brittle over time, and it won't perform necessarily as good as something a little bit higher end, such as an insulated vinyl. So you have an insulated vinyl where your vinyl's a little bit thicker, and you have the insulation behind it. So in the long run, although it costs you more up front, it's gonna save you money over time. And then there are some more innovative um, siding options that have come out in the last few years that involve PVC. What people are now using is they're, if they're not happy with the idea of the vinyl because of the seams uh, or the shininess, they then can go to a premium product. What we came out with is a PVC siding mm -hmm. where it's a solid, so you see how it's a solid PVC. Okay. So it's sturdier, you don't have those ugly seams you don't have any of the joints opening up. It holds up to the weather nicely. It's PVC, so there's no moisture concerns. So you're not gonna have any of those problems. Ah, so the siding's up and finished. Time to sit back and relax, right? Don't forget about the deck. What goes underneath you is a big investment, and you have a wide variety of options there, too. Decking is Jim Covert's life. This is your showroom. You're accustomed to telling customers what they have for options. So run through what's the concerns, what do people have to consider, and how do they make a great deck they can enjoy? Basically, we try to figure out where the deck is going. Is it uh, exposed to the sun a lot, that type of thing, uh, the size of the project, of course, whether it's a resurface or brand new. Are they looking for real wood? or are they looking for low maintenance synthetic products? Jim, the first decking that I was ever really exposed to was my grandparents, redwood painted, wood deck, and a lot of kids might associate that with splinters. Decking has come a long way since then, uh, right? A very long way, yes. Most of our sales are synthetic products. The two main decking that we handle is gonna be a PVC decking or capped composite decking. Capped composite will have wood fiber and plastic. The PVC is an all plastic product. Difference in performance, not too much, except the PVC might be a little bit cooler. Well, we do offer wood still, but most of the uh, projects these days are, are synthetic. What's the advantage to buying synthetic? Maintenance, the low maintenance, that's what most people like nowadays. It's gonna look a lot nicer, a lot longer than your wood products. If you have a low budget, what are great options for your decking? Well, if it's a low budget, then you're gonna be in treated lumber or uh, lower end composite. And what do the higher price composites have to offer? It mostly comes down to look, stuff that looks more like real wood costs more. And now with a look at the real inside view of the building trade and all of these options that are available, Doug Fenichel joins us. So Doug, when customers are talking about their options, clearly, and I'm a homeowner, budget and looks are the biggest factors that I typically encounter. What's your best advice for people when they're making these kinds of investments in their home? It can be a beautiful product, but you have to look beyond the beauty of the product. You have to look at how that product is going to hold up, what installation challenges are there. Um, by talking with a professional contractor, they can counsel you as to how that product is going to work on your house as opposed to a house in a magazine that you might have seen. What are the pros and cons of tackling a siding project or a decking project on your own? getting yourself educated by talking to experts about what products you want and finding a good contractor to do that. By finding a good contractor to do the job for you, you, you know the, con the job is going to be done correctly, you know the products are going to be right. If you choose to do the job yourself, you may wind up not only buying the products, but buying the mistakes. 
You want your home to be a warm, inviting place to be. So before you launch into any big renovation or repair project, education is the first step. You may want to consult a professional and find out what choices are available to you.